Hey everyone, Psychriasen here, and in this lesson I'm going to talk a little bit about style. And what I'm doing right now is a generic drawing, so I'm just laying in the guides for that. Um, I'm not too happy with any of the drawings here, but it's more about, you know, a lesson and not showing off ability because <laughs> it really doesn't um, but anyway so something that I sometimes get asked is uh, if I could show how to draw in one style or another uh, you know usually it's uh, can you draw an anime style um, and I'm always hesitant to go into this because I don't I don't think there's one anime style and the way I view it is more exaggerating certain features or certain aspects or qualities of a of an image so what I've got here is more like a, maybe a cartoon not really cartoony but more like a comic book esque style I guess you could call it um, where it's not you know hyper realistic but it's it's not super anime-ish, I, I guess. Uh, and now what I'll do is I'll attempt the same face, but in a more realistic manner. And my main point is to show that the underlying foundational skills are the same. It's if, if you have the foundation, then all you're doing is varying things like, okay, do I make the eyes, uh, the eye sockets and the eyes bigger or smaller? Um, do I simplify forms or do I really uh, add minute details? Uh, how much do I add shading, right? Like all these things are what determine in the end uh, style. Now, there are people who might learn to draw a style by copying another style so for instance uh, you open up a manga and you just look through it and you start just copying that person's style but what you're doing there is you're taking it from a second source so whoever created the style originally probably knew how to draw from life or draw realistically and then they exaggerated certain areas or, um, you know, played around with the shapes to get their style, but it's based in reality. Um, and the advantage to that is that it's flexible. Like, you can change your style to be anything you want. Um, something I don't particularly like about anime too much, although I love most of uh, the variations, is that they tend to be a little bit inbred, like all the styles are very similar. Um, they exaggerate the same things a lot. So for instance, uh, in this, what I'm doing is I'm doing the same face, I'm just making the eyes bigger, I'm making the pupils, in this case, smaller. Uh, the eye sockets get bigger with the eyes, so um, the cheeks are going to get smaller, and the cheekbones and I'm going to minimize the chin, give it nose that's so minimal that you can barely see it, shrink the neck because that's often what happens is if you exaggerate one thing you have to exaggerate something else or it will look weird so if I gave this person a normal size neck it's gonna look really odd because then the face will look broken um, and I'm going crazy with the hair I'm really pushing out the flowiness of it. And all this is designed for appeal. But uh, often this is pretty much what you get with the anime style. It's, it's exaggeration in a certain direction. Uh, and it's all meant to uh, create appeal. But it's still based in reality. Now the thing is, you can veer off that and get into symbols. And this happens, you might see it in uh, chibi stuff or in animes where sometimes a person will be screaming or even when they're talking and their jaw doesn't move up and down it's just the mouth sort of moves so that's not based in reality that's 
um, distortion of reality, which is, I mean, that's okay as well. But once you know the foundations, you can play around with everything and make up styles. And so what I wanted to do here, um, and it's not, not very successful, but I wanted to push things differently. So make the eyes small and make the mouth big just because why not, right? I mean, all the fundamentals are the same. It's just a matter of uh, what you decide to push. And why I like doing this is just because then you have choices. You know, you're not stuck in one style. I don't have to learn to draw by looking at someone else's drawings and see how they interpreted reality and then or is it often, it seems with anime, what they're doing is an interpretation of an interpretation. Um, which is why I said it was sort of inbred. Because you're just, you know, you're feeding off yourself. And when, you, when I see these anyway, you know, people who really, uh, maybe, like I've seen a lot where they'll copy Disney styles, uh, like Glen Keane style. Or uh, they'll do uh, an avatar the airbender style thing and it's like it's very easy to see they copied from the original or the they copied from the style instead of learning how to draw properly because you'll see little mistakes show up um, whereas with foundations you can push things so far so here's this guy and I just wanted to try a completely different thing where I'm more loose and uh, you see this more in uh, French art and why I really love French art is because it sort of, it pushes things, but it's got a good handle on the foundations. And uh, Japanese art does too. It's just, you know, there's too much, um, too many people copy it just because it's such an appealing style. And they neglect the foundations. So, I don't know. I, I personally, I like that style where things are... Um, more rounded a little bit i mean no because I, I really like pointy anime sharp noises that can like pop balloons but um i don't know my my spiel is to learn foundations and i know i'm not teaching you foundations there are other videos i've done that do teach foundations but um mainly it's to be flexible to experiment to not think in terms of like don't base things well you can I mean it's totally up to you but uh, if you want flexibility then learn the foundation so you don't have to so you can base things from reality right and then play around with it uh, you can push things in different directions and so I created this character with this uh, very the flowy style where I just, you know, put things down and then I wanted to see, okay, so what would the same guy look like in more of an anime style? And as I said, there are so many different styles in anime, it's, it's sort of ridiculous to even say that. Or even to say like a manga style, because it's, it depends. You can get more realistic and you can get less realistic and you can push things in very different directions. I mean, uh, the art in One Piece, for instance, is, is completely different than... Um, and like Kenshin so uh, yeah that's also why I'm hesitant to do tutorials too much on style and as for people wanting to know how to do my own style so I, I, I have a video where I showed my sketchbook and that's something I really don't want to do and the reason is because I feel at that point that is what you create yourself, right? Like, I don't feel bad teaching foundations, um, but I wouldn't feel entirely good about teaching how I go about my own version of simplifying reality because that's my way of seeing things. And um, it's quite, I don't know, individual. So, although it might have things that other people have have already done the same way um, it's not something I would teach uh, but anyway so now I'm gonna do more of a realistic 
interpretation of this guy. Um, I wasn't sure how how much I could push uh, the eyebrows and and the mustache and keep them real looking. Uh, so, I mean, I didn't push those too much, but um, yeah. So with reality, I'm I'm thinking more in terms of structure and form than I do with uh, the other styles. And it's not that I don't think of structure and form with the other styles. It's just that you get away with showing less. Um, whereas with the with anything realistic, the and this is this is something that kind of sucks in art, but it's just the way it is. It's that when you get good at drawing, and I'm not saying I'm good, but uh, as you improve in drawing realistically. Um, the more real something looks, the more people can pick out the flaws. So you will probably get better and have more negative criticism if you draw realistically just because people will say, hey, that, uh, that eye looks off. Whereas if you did it in a very stylized way, um, it's harder to criticize. So. Uh, basically, what I'm trying to say is uh, sort of develop a thick skin and be prepared for that. That if you do end up drawing realistically, um, you might not get as much, if praise is something you go after, uh, you might not get as much as you would have if you do uh, some other style. And, yeah, uh, I guess the last point is that when you do have a grasp of foundations, you can do things like tilt heads and make ideas according to what you want instead of having to look at a reference and say, okay, what does the head look like in this tilt? Because you can sort of break down the, the head shape and the skull shape. And of course this takes years. So if you can't do this right away, don't worry, it's not something that you'll probably be able to do for at least a couple of years of, of hard core drawing. And that means, you know, hours and hours a day. Um, maybe you can. <laughs> maybe you're very talented and you can. But for most people, it takes time. So um, the other thing is not to get discouraged and keep going. And, um, but yeah, look to reality as the source of everything, if possible, because once you get a handle of reality, you can bend it any way you want, instead of being limited to one style, or one, I don't know, genre, or, you know, method, one way of drawing. All right, so pretty much, I don't know, I think that's it. Uh, let me think, yeah. Yeah, that's all I want to say. So, hope that helped, and uh, thanks for watching.